The last video I made on apps for a modded 3DS was one of the most successful videos on this channel. So you know what that means. Today we're going to learn about financial accounting, the debit and credit chart. Nah, just kidding. We're going to talk about more apps for a modded 3DS. Come on now. And the first app is NetPass. NetPass is an online street pass, basically. You set the location of your choosing. First, you start at your home, where you can travel to the train station, the plaza, the mall, the beach, the arcade, or the cat cafe. You can travel there virtually, of course, so no need to actually leave your house. Ooh, that was close. You'll receive a street pass in your location, which you can change every 10 hours. And I received like one street pass the entire time I've had the 3DS on my old 3DS. Mainly because I don't take the 3DS anywhere or go outside, you know? But now I can receive a street pass and play street pass games without ever leaving my house. If you do receive a street pass notification, your LED will light up, of course. And in the last video, I did show an app to customize the LED light, but now I found a new app to customize that light. And it was brought to my attention by a comment on the last video. It is RGB Pat 2. RGB Pat 2 is an app that lets you customize your LED notification light. Similar to MCU Brick, but this app allows you to customize more options. You can input the color hex number you want for the notification. For example, if you want a red color, I can use this code BC181 to change it to red. You can also change the pattern of the LED light and test it out on the app. You do have to enable the patch first and select a location to install it in order to use the app. You can customize when the LED light notification will turn off, whether you want to turn off when you close the 3DS or when you shut it down, it's up to you. Another thing I found, well, not really an app, but it's a feature of Luma and it's screen filters if you want to improve your TN screens like mine a bit. If you think your screen looks a bit washed out, you can change the colors and brightness with Luma from your 3DS main menu. If you just hit L, select, and down to bring up the Rosalina menu, from here you can enter the screen filters menu, and here you can choose a preset filter, or make your own custom values in the advanced configuration. It won't quite match an IPS screen, but it can improve your TN screens. Now an app that can save you some hassle when having to remove and insert the SD card back and forth is FTP PD. FTP PD is a file browser that lets you share your files with your 3DS through your internet. All you need to do is open the app, Grab the IP address of your 3DS, then on your computer, just open up a file explorer and type in your IP address shown on the 3DS along with the 5000 number at the end. And voila! Now you can just drag and drop your files onto your system, no more having to grab a screwdriver and take the faceplate off just to get to your SD card. Wow! The next app is a YouTube app for the 3DS. The official YouTube app stopped working a while ago, but there's a few options if you want to watch YouTube on your 3DS for some reason. I tried OldTube, but ThirdTube is better. It's straight up YouTube, and of course you can watch videos from this channel and uh, maybe hit one of these, you know what I'm saying? The Battery Mark. Battery Mark for the 3DS is an app that lets you test out your battery. If your battery is charged to full capacity, you can run a benchmark on it to evaluate the life of your battery on your system. The benchmark does take a few hours actually, and measures the real time of your battery draining from full to empty. And it even has an online ranking for the battery test. I did notice my battery doesn't really last that long anymore, but I do usually play with my brightness at max because I have it at that level to record the videos and then I forget to lower it afterwards. But still, according to this benchmark, my 3DS lasts about 3 hours, so not that great. I might need a new battery or I can just run a test with different settings. The online rankings has the number one spot at 14 hours. I don't know if that's a legitimate result or someone just has the best 3DS battery in history. On the Nintendo support website, it does state the battery duration straight from Nintendo and the new 3DS has a duration of about 3.5 to 6 hours. The battery mark is a really good tool to show how your battery fares and it even sends you the test results in your notification messages. Sure, it does take a long time to benchmark your 3DS, but it's a useful tool. Now why don't we look at one more app, hmm? Input Redirecting. This app allows you to use an external controller on your 3DS. First, you have to download Input Redirection to your PC and type in your device's IP address. Then on the 3DS once again, in the Rosalina menu by pressing L down and select, you go down to the miscellaneous setting and enable the redirecting input, and then exit Rosalina by hitting B. Now I can control my 3DS with an Xbox controller. Hold on, if I stream to the PC, now I can play my 3DS on the big screen with an external controller. If you want to use an external controller in your 3DS, well, there you go. There are many apps out there and many to come in the future. It's interesting to see the community on the 3DS and what can be achieved on the system. As long as you have the storage space, which you can download thousands of apps for on your 3DS, and with the FTP folder app we saw earlier, well, I don't have to take my card out anymore. 
Whoops, dropped it again. Not to worry, I'm not gonna accidentally step on it this time because I put a lanyard on my micro SD card. It's pretty easy too, I just drilled a hole in the- Wait a minute. Ah, oh, damn it. 